Hi, welcome to Biostock. Ultimavax has announced top-line data from its Phase two NIPU trial assessing the universal cancer vaccine UV1 in mesothelioma. An independent review has concluded that the primary endpoint of progression-free survival has not been reached. However, a local assessment has found a statistically significant improvement in progression-free survival among patients with UV1. Joining me via link from Oslo to tell us more about these results is Jens Bjorheim, CMO at Ultimovax. Welcome, Jens. Thank you so much for the invitation. Great to be here. Well, it's great to have you here, Jens. I'd like to begin with some basics about the NIPU trial. Uh, the trial is evaluating UV1 as a second-line treatment for mesothelioma, not a first-line treatment. Why is this important? At the time this study was started, um, back in 2020, there were uh, the treatment regime in the mesothelioma was uh, chemotherapy for first-line patients and then uh, palliative treatment in second line. So there was no treatment option in uh, the second line uh, treatment, but there were a few trials, smaller trials, phase one trials, that indicated that checkpoint inhibitors might have some effect there. Uh, just um, soon after the study was started, IPI and uh, nivolumab uh, was approved as a first-line treatment in this uh, indication uh, in uh, the U.S. 2020 and in EMA 2021. Looking at the results of the study, as I mentioned earlier, the independent review process uh, saw that the primary endpoint wasn't reached. However, a local assessment saw a statistically significant difference in progression-free survival. Could you explain the difference between these two review processes? Yes. So um, PFS was selected as primary endpoint in this trial. Uh, it is something that is uh, agreed also with the authorities, and PFS is looked upon as a relevant surrogate endpoint for the most important endpoint, which is overall survival. Um, if you want to get um, in discussions with the regulatory authorities um, for further development, they often expect that you have a central uh, review results of your trial. So uh, this central review was selected up as primary uh, review of the um, patient images. Now, a central review as such means that a third party um, organization is uh, uh, reviewing the images from the uh, patients, and uh, uh, that is then the primary endpoint uh, of the study. Connected to uh, all primary endpoints, there are also different sensitivity analyses, meaning that you are uh, testing the answer in your primary endpoint uh, with different methodologies. One of these is local assessment of the images, which is done by the radiologist at the different hospitals uh, involved in this trial. And in, in this uh, study, uh, the results from these two assessments were different. And the primary endpoint of the study was negative, and therefore we need to conclude that the study as such was negative. The local assessment uh, of uh, PFS was positive. I, I also would like to mention one more thing, and that is that um, this, even if the study as such was a negative trial, it's very also important to also to uh, ask the question, is UV1 in combination with it be an email a uh, relevant treatment for this patient group? And the only endpoint that can give you a good answer to that is overall survival. So we are waiting for the overall result, and overall uh, survival results in this study uh, to mature. Uh, expect the first uh, presentation of such um, uh, this autumn. And also there will be follow-up um, of the clinical endpoints in this trial uh, over the next uh, few years. So is it fair to say that the overall survival results that you will receive will give you a better understanding of which review process was, uh, let's say, more relevant here? Yeah, so um, let's try to put this into context. So why are we measuring PFS if uh, overall survival is the most important endpoint? Uh, this is important because if you have surrogate endpoints that can indicate uh, what will happen in the future with a group of patients, that will be of value when you develop new drugs. 
So in some indications, like in melanoma and non-small cell lung cancer, we have seen a clear uh, association between improved uh, progression-free survival and overall survival in patients. For mesothelioma, the number of trials available to study this is very limited, but there are some uh, recent results that indicate that PFS might not be uh, of such high value in that indication. At ASCO meeting last week, uh, the MSD study uh, in first-line mesothelioma, um, it was a phase three trial with several patients, a registration trial, chemotherapy in both arms, and pembrolizumab on top in the intervention arm. In that study, the PFS turned out identical uh, in both, both arms, with, but with an overall survival benefit for those patients that received um, pembrolizumab on top. So the same is for our trial. Uh, so we have two different informations here now, one negative uh, and one positive PFS readout. How that correlate or associate with overall survival, if the um, uh, overall survival is positive, uh, we only know that uh, in the future. So um, it's exciting days in a way. Uh, we are waiting for overall survival results and that is uh, the end point that will in a way be the decision point uh, if we should move forward with UV1 in this uh, indication or not. Throughout this trial, have you been able to look at the mechanism of action of UV1 respective to mesothelioma and whether it produces an immune response uh, relative to the disease? So prior to start of treatment, we know that most patients uh, in this indication express uh, telomerase. So uh, the biomarker or the target for the T cells we expand that recognize telomerase, we know that uh, that target is already in the tumor. The tricky question here is that will the T cell get into the tumor or not? Mm -hmm. um, so if you have, um, if you look at the CPIs over the last decade, you can see that there are different responses in different indications. All CPIs are dependent on the pre-existing T cells in, in the patients for us to see clinical relevant efficacy for patients. Uh, so the question with this vaccine is that, um, is there enough patients that respond to CPIs so that we can see a clinically relevant uh, response with the vaccine on top? Or maybe are there patients that wouldn't respond to CPI alone that need this extra vaccine. So in a way, turning a somewhat colder tumor into a hotter tumor, is that if that is a, a mode of action of the T cells. Uh, we do not know this as of now, but um, parallel to all the uh, randomized phase two trials we are conducting, there is, uh, <clears throat> we are collecting samples, both solid and uh, liquid uh, biopsies. Uh, to do uh, different uh, investigations or science uh, to further understand the mode of action of the vaccine in the combination with checkpoint inhibitors. And also to mention one more thing, if you go one step back in a way, we have by intention either sponsored as we do with our lead indication uh, in melanoma or in this uh, IIT trials where we collaborate, uh, wanted to have um, indications with very different biology. So in one, one way, you can say that mesothelioma and head and neck cancer is expected to have a lower response to checkpoint inhibitors, mm -hmm. while a malignant melanoma and non small cell lung cancer is expected to have a higher response rate to checkpoint inhibitors. How this reads out when it comes to PFS and overall survival, if you add the vaccine on top, it is currently unknown. There is a actually no uh, randomized trials and with a vaccine um, which is like general vaccine and checkpoint inhibitors um, in this uh, uh, indications uh, as of today so we are in new territory and we are trying to understand how the different endpoints uh, work together uh, also um, in this uh, indications as pfs versus overall survival in mesothelioma as we are discussing today mm -hmm. The NIPU trial is the first phase two trial evaluating UV1 uh, that has produced top line data for Ultimavax. Uh, so what did these results mean for the other uh, ongoing trials with UV1? So right now we have five different uh, randomized phase two trials in uh, 
five different uh, biologists. Um, as of now, we cannot in a way directly say that results identified in one uh, indication is also transferable to other indications. Uh, based on uh, the efficacy signals we have seen in phase and uh, one trials, and also the fact that there is a trend towards overall survival in the mesothelioma trial, um, keeps us uh, positive, and we really look forward to the readout of these other trials as well. Mm -hmm. And finally, what comes next for the NIPU trial? So the important thing here now is to understand if there is a uh, relevant medical uh, need to further develop uh, the UV1 vaccine and ipilimumab and nivolumab. The gold standard endpoint here is overall survival, so we will follow for overall survival. If that turns out to be positive, statistically significant positive for um, <clears throat> the experimental group, that could be um, a decision point leading to the fact that UV1 will be developed further in a phase three trial. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you so much, Jens, for your expert analysis and for explaining some of these things to us. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing more from Ultimavax. Thank you so much.